All right, so let's start off with the uh, keynote presentation. And as always, we're very happy to see you. And if you really didn't think how important you are to Mac Group's survival, <coughs> I hope today really let you know how much we need your support and your word of mouth and everything that you can possibly, you know, speak about Mac Group. All right, so appreciate seeing you here today. All right, my portion of this presentation is going to cover um, a couple of iPhone scanning apps. And uh, after I'm done, then Stephen Gold is going to present Hazel, and it's also a scanning uh, paperless workflow. As much as possible, I try not to have paper around my home. But unfortunately, the mail carrier keeps bringing me like gobs and gobs of paper. So some things I, actually I don't keep any paper, I scan everything. And that's why it was so hard for me to find something to scan today, because I didn't have any paper in my house to do this presentation with. So I, I found some. So um, I've been an advocate of scanning for a very long time. I've done a couple of presentations here at Mac Group about uh, using Acrobat and the Fujitsu scanner, and I still love it, still have that little workhorse. So I do run across occasion where I need to scan something or want to keep something when I'm out, but I actually don't want to keep the physical paper. So why would I need or why would you need a mobile scanning device? For business or personal needs, uh, business cards. People give me business cards and I will scan them or take a photo of them and then discard the card. I don't want to have the responsibility of taking that card home and typing in all of that information. I want to scan it or take a photo of it and then use it later. I don't want to physically carry that paper around. Does anybody feel the way I do? All right, great, thank you. I just want to make sure I wasn't the only one who's, uh, sometimes people call it anal, but, you know, for me, I don't want to carry all that paper. Yes, sir? Um, yes and no, because I scan um, sales receipts, and now because of, I think it was 2000, um, the Commerce Act, PDFs are so widely accepted that for something like a sales receipt, and again, it's depending on what it is, you can actually have that PDF of it. So I don't keep sales receipts unless it's of something that I, you know, a big ticket item, and I want to make sure that if something goes wrong, I don't want someone to say to me, well, you don't have the actual receipt, you just have a scan of it. So, but it keeps my, it keeps my uh, pile of receipts down to, where possibly I may have, I don't know, 50, 60 a month, I may only have five. All right, Cal, you had a question? Yeah, on that sales uh, situation, in some stores, for example, Home Depot, yes. will email your receipts directly to your email address, and they will accept the image as a valid receipt. So if you go back in, pull it up on your phone, sit here, look at it, and I'll leave it. Right, and so will, of course, the Apple Store does the same thing, and I've had other merchants ask me, actually Macy's will do the same thing. They will ask me during a purchase, would you prefer an email receipt or a physical receipt? So they are more widely accepted now. So, and some, you know, I know crooks are gen geniuses, but sometimes some things you wouldn't know how to, you know, manipulate even if you tried. So, yes, sir? Even like Costco, uh, you're right, you don't need your receipt. <laughs> yes, Costco is very good about that. Yeah, because they actually use that because at one point I think some of their customers got bad product and they were able to contact the people who bought the product to let them know. So yeah, I heard about that. So with business cards and with receipts and even with documents, um, you know, some documents you may not be able to take with you or you just want to copy a portion of the content, having a mobile scanner will be very advantageous to you. So what I did, I looked on iTunes. All right, scanning with mobile devices. You have your iPad, your iPhone, your iPod Touch, and you also have Android devices. So I looked for apps that could possibly 
fill a criteria. And guess what? I found millions of them. But backing up for a second, your mobile device is not intended to replace your big scanner. I will never get rid of my little Fujitsu. That little thing has been, oh my God, you know, every books, magazines, I had two file cabinets full of paper at one point in my life. And within two months, I got rid of all of that paper, just scanned it, and it brings things back into your space, you know. So, so for example, why would you want to have a mobile scanner? Uh, for example, when you're at dinner you know, at restaurants, you know, people like to hand you their cards if, you're, if it's a business meeting or if you're in any type of meeting with other companies, you may find you know, people are passing business cards across the table so you end up with a stack. You know. And also when you're just bumping into people, you will receive a business card. So something like a mobile scanner, not meant to replace the big one, just meant to be used when you don't have the big one with you. You can't carry that little Fujitsu around with you all the time. You know, it's great, they make smaller versions, but you can't carry it all the time. All right, so when I went online to the iTunes store to look for apps for mobile scanning, I thought, well, what features do I require? You have edge detection, you have OCR, you have editing. OCR is optical character recognition, um, basically turning the scan into text. Excuse me. Uh, do you need to edit text? Image quality is always important. File storage management, cloud capabilities, whether you can work with iCloud Drive or other cloud services that you may have, like Dropbox or Evernote. And some of these apps will actually allow you to scan uh, and fax. Uh, I have not seen one that allows you to do that for free, but they do have in-app purchases where you can fax. So I would imagine that with those, you actually need an account to work uh, with this app. And recent updates. Do you have any idea how many apps are on the App Store that haven't been updated in years? Lots. So that is actually one of the first things that I look for when I'm looking at an app. When was the last time it was updated? And several apps that I saw had not been updated since the beginning of last year. Those are the ones I immediately move on from. Right. So. I am going to demonstrate two apps here. And both of these apps actually start off as free apps. So um, you can have uh, two alternatives here, free or paid. Of course, the free apps will only give you some features. Uh, this particular app, I chose it because it was easy. I do not want to have to spend hours trying to figure out how an app works. I will give it one hour. If it takes more than one hour, I'm moving on. I also don't like an app that makes you create an account. I'm not interested in an account. I want everything done on my iPhone. Uh, I like that this particular app allows you to export to iCloud Drive and I can open um, the PDFs in other apps and it has file management. It allows me to uh, create a password to open it. This particular app uh, is a iDevice only and it's free but if you want to scan and save more than seven, uh, 20 pages then you have to buy the paid, uh, paid version. So you also have faxing, in-app purchase, you can highlight and annotate and some of these other things. So let me do this, let me hide this and open up this particular app and show you some of the features. So open up Scanner and uh, I initially uh, downloaded the free version of Scanner app and then I thought well you know the paid version was only $2.99 and it allows you to save more than 20 pages if you need to. So Is that 20 pages in total forever or just a 20 page document? 
no, uh, 20, 20 files. 20, you know, that's a good question. Because it does say 20 pages. So now it scans, every page is a single page. So um, maybe your initial 20 scans, and then after that, if you want, if you need more, you have to have the paid version. And it's only $2.99, so it's not a, a very deep vent, uh, dent in your pocket. So I'm going to open up the pro version, which is only $2.99. It's exactly the same as the free version, just with the exception it allows you to scan more pages. So there are chances that I would occasionally have my iPad along with me, but this is attached to my hip all the time. So I would primarily use my iPhone as a scanner. So as you see, it's, you know, the camera's pretty good. So looking at the UI of this thing, let me move this over, and you'll see a couple of buttons. On the left-hand side, that cute little flower allows you to go to your photos. You can actually bring some of your photos in. You have your camera on the right, and uh, you just click on the camera in order to scan. You can, you can set up folders, and the, uh, the initial folder in this app is actually called None. So you may think None is None. None is actually a folder here. And down at the bottom, you'll see a little bin for um, once I start creating files and creating folders, you'll see that bin fill up. You have your settings on the lower right, and the settings you allow you to do Wi-Fi sharing. So if you're in a closed network and you need to share files amongst each other, you can do that. You can fax and save it to these um, different services, Google Drive, Dropbox, Evernote, and so forth. And just a few more options that you have. So let me cancel out of that and let's start scanning. Okay. So I'm positioning my camera over the image and you may notice in the upper left corner if I needed my flash I can turn it on so that it'll flash the camera or what is that flash the camera if I need it but I'm going to turn that off because there's plenty of light here so I position over it and I tap to make sure that it's in focus and then I click and it brings in and actually what what I see on my screen is not what you see there it is all right so it sees the image that I took a picture of and this is edge detection that you're looking at so I'm moving in the little points so that I can get the page and once I adjust the edge detection, I can click on the next button, and now it's processing. So it has three flavors that it'll allow me to process in. Black and white, color, and you'll actually see the tone of the image change, and the original. And with the original, if I need to, I can adjust the color. And what this is for, let's say if you have a, if you scanned in a certain light and you're getting red tones in your image, it just allows you to make this a truer, in my case, white page. So I'm going to set that about there. Once I'm done, and you see other options that I have up at the top, I can rotate if I want, and um, this one aspect ratio is perfect so I don't need to change anything so now I'm just going to click save and it saves it and if you look down on the lower left hand corner you'll see the browse bin has now been filled and there's my document and let me click on the browse bin take, let you take a look here so here's the folders tab and I just I can just slide that left and right so right now Everything is sitting in the None folder. So let me create a new folder. And let's name this folder. Uh, we're going to call it MGD3. And I can also password protect the folder if I need to. So you're also given 
the warning. There is no way to unlock the folder if you forget the password. So be careful. So I'm going to enter a password and let's A, 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 A. Now, hopefully I'll never forget that. A, 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 A. Choose done. All right, and you can also send yourself an email to tell, him, tell you what this password is, just in case you forget. All right, All right so I'm going to choose done. And there's a little key at the top of the folder. And let's see if it'll, now if I want to get back in there, let me in. There, there you are. There. So now, I've saved my folder, I've password protected it, and now I've clicked on the page. You can zoom in so that you can see what the text is. Move it around. And you can also, let's say you needed a note, notation, to remind you of what exactly this scan is for. So I can click on the little note icon here, and I can type in, let's see, this was about reader. Okay, so I'm going to type in reader, whoops. All right. And then, okay, that's done. So anytime you click there, the note will pop up just to remind you of what this is. And I can also do a few notations. On the upper right hand corner you see the palette and I'm going to click on the palette and it brings up uh, a pencil, a highlighter, and an eraser and I can set the width of either just by clicking on this icon and sliding the slider and I can also set the color just by tapping there and then moving that around and just tap anywhere to dismiss so, for example, with the pen, if I wanted to underline something, I could underline that. If I wanted to highlight, I can highlight that. And if I wanted to erase portions, I can do that. So, after I'm done, I'm going to save this. And, let's tap out of that. So that's basically how you save a scan. Now let me do one more thing. I'm going to add another scan to this. <clears throat> Is there a limit to the number of devices that you can use on that when you purchase the extra? I'm sorry, say that again, please. Yeah, if you sit in there and you make you get five or six different devices, are you allowed to use it on all of the devices that you own or is there? Oh, yes. If you're in one account, yeah. yeah. So the question is, can I use this app on all of my devices? Yes, because once I download it, I can also download it to my iPad or either, whichever iPad I have because they're connected to all accounts. Right. So, what was the name of this app? This is the name of this app is Scanner App. Now, I yes. went to the to the store and looked up iPhone something. They had like four different uh, scanner apps. Yes. And um, they, one of them are scan, uh, scanner app. Uh, it, it, scanner app is there. It's there. So is this the best of the bunch? The scanner app is the free one of the bunch. The other apps are for scanning um, multiple pages and doing other things. They have other features. So it can get a little confusing as to which one of those you would want. I chose Scanner App because it fulfilled all the features that I would need in, I want to say, a free app if I did not need OCR. So, okay. All right, so let me do this. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do uh, the edge detection here. And next, and I'm just going to save this. I'm not going to do anything else to it. All right, so let's go back here. And 
Now, if you want to export this out as a PDF, you have to tell it what files you want to export out. So, if I select Edit, it gives me the option to choose. And also, the order you choose is also the order that this PDF will be built in. So, I want this to be page 1 and that to be page 2. And down at the bottom left corner, the Share icon, I'm going to click that. And you see you can use AirPrint, you can fax, email, or open in, or send to album. I'm going to choose Upload, and I'm going to upload it to OnCloud Drive as a PDF. And it asks me where do I want to save it. And I'm just going to choose export to this location. There's no, normally I would have a folder in my iCloud drive that I store things in, but even if I don't, I can just tell it to export to this location. And now I'm done. So let me go to my computer. And let's see if I can. Can you print? It, it has the air print ability, and I would imagine that would print out at actual size because it was saved as scanned at letter size. So it's going to print out at that size as well. All right, let's see. I think I can use this one. And let's go to iCloud Drive. And all right, it should be this one today at 2.56 p.m. I think that's it. So let's open it up. And here is the PDF that I just created on my iPhone. And there's my annotation. And this is the order that I saved it in. First page, second page. All right. So, Yes, Alan. Do you have any choice of resolution when you actually take the picture, like the medium or high res, or is that pretty much fixed? It, it's pretty much fixed here. Okay. Um, you can like set default document size for scanning, but as far as resolution, is set okay. on here. All right. You. You're welcome. All right, so let's cancel that. All right, so I felt that for a free app, that if all I'm going to do is scan and save my document. This app worked very well. What do you think? Has features that you could use? All right. Question: yeah. the magazines, um, how efficient is that? Whole magazines? No, not whole magazines. No, whole magazines. 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 You don't have the most optimal uh, environment in which to do that. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of shadow in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, what are some of the tricks? And so, what are some of the tricks that you use to get rid of that shadow? Well, if I were scanning a magazine, I take the magazine home. No, I'm not saying. No, no, I'm saying because. Well, let me finish with both of these apps, and maybe that might answer your question with the second app. Right? Okay. All right. So, let's see. Anything else? So, again, the reason I selected this app to start with is because it was so easy to use. And I think, again, for, and actually I can even tap to show what days the uh, scans were made. So, uh, very easy to use. The $299 price for the Pro, if you want more than 20 pages, I think it's really easy to work with. Yes, sir. You said uh, if you didn't want OCR, you, did it have the capability to do No, OCR? this one does not have the capability to do OCR, this app. All right, well, if somebody gives you a business card, you remember his name, but you don't remember his contact, well, how would you find it? I'd pull out my other app that I'm going to go over in a minute. So let me do the other one, and then that might answer your question. All right. All right. Yeah, or you can just look at the picture. Yeah, that's what I do. Cal, you had a question. The annotation that you did at the beginning, not to the actual document, but that note notation you put in there? Yes. 
Is that function of the keyword so it gets searched for? Not in this app. No, this is very bare bones, free, so you're only going to get a limited number of features. Yes? Well, if that created a PDF, you should, if you've got Acrobat Pro, you should be able to open that and yes. Acrobat Pro and then do OCLA. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, then this may fulfill your candy scanning needs, but let me go over the next one. Okay, last question. Yes? If you're sitting here and you're doing this as <coughs> All right. All right, cool. All right. Um, all right, so let me get out of this one. And again, the name of this app is Scanner App or Scanner App Plus. Well worth the $2.99, that's $3 that you would spend for it. All right. Now, let me go back to Keynote for a second. And let's take a look at the second app that I use for scanning. This app is called ScanBot. And the reasons I like this app, easy to use. No account required. It syncs to iCloud Drive. You'll see the difference. I can OCR with this app directly within my iPhone. I don't have to create an account and it's OCR somewhere else. I can password protect my files using uh, Apple's Touch ID built into the iPhone. I can um, scan multiple pages with this and initially it's free. If you want the pro features that I'm going to show you, basically the OCR uh, is $4.99. There are other, I think, prices related if you go to the iTunes store and see this, and I think they range from $2.99 to $4.99. Uh, the other features, auto detection scanning of a document. It will also scan QR codes. So if you want to read a QR code, it will take you to a URL. And unlike with the last app I showed you, I can rename my files in this app. So, uh, and set reminders, themes, and upload, and so forth. So let's take you through that. All right, so let's take a look at ScanBot. All right, now I'm going to stop that for a second because otherwise it would start scanning. <laughs> All right, so ScanBot, you can automatically set it to upload your scans as soon as you take them. So if I want it to enable automatic upload, and let me just click this and show you this for a second. I can set it to automatically upload to Dropbox, Google Drive, um, Wonderlist, Evernote, Slack, and some of these others that you see listed here. But that is not the same as syncing to iCloud Drive. It can also automatically <coughs> sync to iCloud Drive, which I have turned on. So uh, with the other app I showed you that I had to upload it. With this app, everything automatically goes there. So, or is safe there because I have this turned on. And I have text recognition turned on. Smart naming is set. And actually, let me click on that. They have a lot of tags that are automatically in this App, and you can create your own or use any of these. So if you don't have the time to tap and put in uh, input the uh, words automatically, you can set up your own tags so that all you have to do is just click on the tags and it will add them to the name. Oops, all right, I'll get back to that. So let's go, let's go to ScanBot and month and day. All right, so I just wanted to show you that for a second. I'm done. And uh, start with the camera. Say, I can tell it to save to the camera roll. This one allows me to set quality and file size. So scan quality. I can go low res. Ew. I can go medium, which is a little better. And you can go high and best. Best, of course, is going to give you the largest file. 
but high is pretty acceptable. So can you see the quality change as I tap on these? Yeah. All right, so you can decide what quality you want for your scans. I'm going to just leave it at high, actually, go to best. All right. And one of the reasons that I brought you into this screen beforehand is that I find the interface a little hard to work with right now because it's red, bright red. So what I like about this is that it has themes and I can change the theme to whatever suits my eyes because maybe different times of day your eyesight wants to see different things. So I'm going to set it at Obsidian. I like that one a little better. And select the theme. So now I'm working with this thing. So, personal preference here. Alright, so let's choose. I'm going to choose Done. And actually, I'm going to choose Done while I'm doing this because this app will automatically recognize that a page is in front of it and it's going to start scanning without me clicking or tapping for it to be in focus and then telling it to scan. So let's choose done and scan and it's giving me little note, notes. Searching document, perspective, so let me move my camera and at some point if I get this right it's going to tell me don't move. Okay, come on. I see a little shadow. Let's try this one. You see it giving me all these no notations? Don't move. All right, it just took a scan. And now it's finishing up. And it right, right at the top here, you can see the name that it gave it. And you see the little iCloud Drive icon. It's automatically sent it to iCloud Drive already. And let me... Let me save. And. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But. I can't set up iCloud Drive. Can you take a second to say that you did that in addition saying you don't want? Why did I set it for iCloud Drive? It's just easier because even depending on um, where I am, sometimes I don't like putting in my passwords to my accounts. So I could automatically link it to Dropbox so that it automatically goes there. But I, for this demonstration, when I'm at home, it's just easier to have it go to iCloud Drive. Okay? All right, so hold on a second. I'm going to show you something else. So down in the lower left corner, you see it says 1 to infinity. If I slide this over, if, I let, if it'll recognize it will automatically start scanning multiple pages for me. Yeah. Okay. Perspective. It's, it's picking up that light and the shadow. That's why it's not. So if it doesn't find that, I can do this manually. Searching document. Perspective. Don't move. There you go. You saw that? So now when I move over, it's going through. Yeah, nothing found. Come on. Don't move. Move closer. All right, I'll move closer. All right, don't move. So it's automatically scanning, even if I come here. It's going to try to pick this up. And it's going to say, don't move. Perspective. Okay, come back. It's picking up the shadow from the light there. So, but you get the idea of what it's doing? <coughs> say yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So now, um, no, don't scan that. Give me one. Um, turn that down. All right. So I've got that. All right. So scanned two, and I'm gonna click on the two, and it takes me, and it takes me to the pages that is already scanned. Here's one, and here's two, and I'm going to save those two pages. And it tells me it's processing, and the scan 
uh, information also tells me, or the page information also tells me how many pages are in that. So it's still processing. And I have OCR automatically turned on. So once it processes, I can go in and work with the text. So I'm still waiting for it to finish. <laughs> Any questions while I'm waiting for the finish processing? Yes, sir. If you have a very large document, can you stitch them together? So, uh, I would think so, yes. Because you know, you can't always step back. Yes, I would definitely try it. It, it, would, it would be just like taking this page and have it folded in half and yeah. just turning it over. So, yes. John? Uh, you mentioned it's not really uploading to iCloud Drive. Syncing, whatever changes I make to the document on my iPhone are automatically sent to my computer. Syncing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I have yes. A question. if, uh, like if you take a photo of something in the page and you, there's no OCR mm -hmm. and, you, and you just save it, and if you've got hundreds of photos and you want to find that later, what way do you do it other than going through each and No, you can, on your computer, if you press, um, if you select the file and choose Get Info, there is a box at the top of the Get Info page where you can actually put um, keywords in there. And once you close the window, that's saved to that file. So if you uh, use Spotlight and search for keywords, it'll bring that keyword up and take you to that file. Well, no, because I don't use that app for that. I do not um, place any of my photos in iPhoto that way. So if I take images off of my camera, I will um, automatically tag them first and just put them uh, in a folder structure that I choose. All right. All right, so let me continue on with this. So you see that I've enlarged this scan. And if I hold down my finger, you see that I can now select this text. And I can copy it, define it, or speak it. Are you speaking? Uh, no, it doesn't want to speak. OK, speak. Uh, oh, I told you, do not, it's on, do not disturb. So I'll just, I'll just keep moving on. All right, so it's, you see that it has OCR the text. I can select it, I can copy it, I can even search the text. So let me go back, go back, and select that, and where are you? Oh, I'm here, here you are, there. I clicked on the little icon in the upper right corner, and it brings up features. Show, copy, share, search. So I selected search, and I want to find the word and. So now it's gone through all of the text in these two pages to show me where it is. So if I click on any one, it will show me where it's at, and that is. So I'll zoom in. Well, it shows me where they all are. 
So, and it will take you to them. So I got a lot of ants here. So, really sweet. All right, so search, share, copy, show. And if I want to edit, I have where I can also highlight. So let me zoom in. And, oops, big highlight. And let's see, erase that. So, and I can add a notation here. And notation. Uh, acrobat, not leader. Okay, I need idea. It's the name of that article. And choose, close that, and the little notes there. I can even add a signature. So I'm going to click on the icon in the lower right corner, and it brings up this is something that I already put in there. I'm going to take that one. Oops. I'm going to edit. Just take that one out. And let's add another one. And let's put in a Okay, not much better, but choose done. So save. Alright, it did not come through. Let me try that again. It probably came through, but all right, so let's go there again. All right. There it is. All right, so I can put my signature there and resize it if I need to and save. I can also password protect. I can also set reminders. So you see a little stopwatch down here. I can save reminders in the ScanBot app or save reminders in the iPhone's reminder app. Let's close that. And now I'm going to save that. And if I wanted to change the name, let's say if I wanted to add a custom name, tap here to create a new tag. So let's just say I wanted to name this one Reader or have a tag reader. So now I've added that. Let me go back and document type. All right. So I can take that out of there and I can just click on the tags to tell it what I want this name to be. And other features, date, time, calendar, document type. Let's choose save. So now my document has a new name. You can see it across the top. All right, so let me close out of this for a second and go to my computer. And let's go to iCloud Drive and <laughs> I have a folder missing. Sorry. Okay, at this point, a file was not showing up on my iCloud Drive. So what I had to do was go to iCloud.com, and once I logged in to my account, the iCloud Drive did show up in the Finder. So now I'm going to continue on with the information I wanted to present about the ScanBot app. So now you see that the file that I just been working with, Acrobat Article Reader, is on my uh, on my in my Finder on uh, iCloud Drive. I'm going to double click it to open it up, and I want it to show you that this file is already OCR'd. It maintains that quality from the ScanBot app. Okay. Alright, so going back into ScanBot, I'm going to open up that scan that I just created. And I wanted to show you that if I select the icon in the upper right hand corner to show some of the other options that are available, I want to select Show. And with the Show button, I can see all of the text that has been OCR'd in the document. Uh, there are a couple of what you might call artifacts here. 
but for the most part I got all of the text from those two files. Now that I can see all of the text, I can still copy the text and even define or speak the text. There it is, it's speaking. Okay, so let's stop that. And, and one more time back in there. And notice that I can increase the size of the text or make the text smaller. To show how iCloud Syncing works with the ScanBot app, I'm going to add a note. So let me press the note button, add a note here, and we're going to type in test note. Okay, and then I'm going to close the note, and now I'm going to save the document. Now looking at my computer screen, you're going to see that the app is processing and you automatically saw that processed with the um, iCloud sync you saw the iCloud icon iCloud drive icon appear it processed just that fast and uh, then disappeared and just uh, let's try that again let me add one more note and let's add just another note here and I'm going to just type in two close that and save and now watch the finder icon and there you see it appear and there's the iCloud Drive icon so it automatically syncs changes that I make on my iPhone to iCloud Drive now the next thing I'm going to do is save this document and I'm actually going to password protect it first so I clicked on the edit icon and now I'm going to click on the little lock in the lower middle portion of the screen and I'm going to give this document a password and I'm going to name it read and verify the password which is read R-E-A-D and guaranteed that won't be the password used again so I'm going to choose OK and now you see the lock at the bottom of the icon uh, area so let me choose save by locking your document with pass with password you will lose all annotations okay so I don't want to do that but for the sake of this presentation I'm going to go ahead and choose continue so the document is locked alright it's processing right now So now, if I go back to the other documents, and I'm going to select this one, and you see that the document is locked, and in order to get to it, I have to enter the password. What I'm going to do right now, though, I'm just going to use the, I want to use the Touch ID to unlock it instead of using uh, the password all the time. So I'm going to go back to the screen and go back to the um, settings, and I'm going to choose password lock and touch ID right now it's off I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to enter a new passcode 1111 and guaranteed again that won't be my passcode so I'm going to choose done and re-enter it again and choose save so that's on and it's set to auto lock after so many minutes I can choose five or ten uh, I'm going to just leave that at one and let's go back to the document and I'm going to choose done then go back to the document so let's select the document again so I'm going to click on the little thumbprint on the right hand side and now use my thumb and it automatically opens the document so you can password protect using the iPhone touch ID technology that's already there all right, so this is Sheeta Hunter. That's all I have for you today. I hope you uh, got something out of these reviews for mobile scanning, and I hope you um, download these two apps and take them for a spin. I think they are well worth looking at. Take care. Until next time.